Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Praise God. We thank God for another opportunity the Lord has given me to come and share with you, praise God, the precious word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. On this Wednesday, it is December uh, the 7th, I believe it is, praise God, 2022. And I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama, Praise God, once again, declaring to you that Jesus Christ, he is the answer. He's the only answer to the problems that we're facing today. <clears throat> praise God, we have only to turn to him, praise God, in faith and believe that he will, praise God, he will do what he said he will do. If we would humble ourselves, praise God, pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. The Lord has promised, praise God, that he'll be there, he'll heal our land. Praise God, and he'll give us clear directions that will lead and guide us into a better world today. Amen. Praise God. But now, are you ready to study the Word of God with me today? Praise God, I ask that you turn with me to the book of 1 Peter. We're going to once again look at 1 Peter. I think we began looking at these scriptures a week before last. And uh, we're going to do our last word, our last message uh, from these scriptures that we began looking at on the week before last. First Peter 2, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and look at uh, verse, praise God, we're going to look at verse 4 again. Begin at verse 4. And I do encourage you once again, praise God, do look with me. Praise God, it is very dangerous today to take the word of someone else as to what God has said when the word of God is so readily available to all of us today. You have no need that any man teach you, the Bible says. Praise God, the Holy Spirit, the power of God, he will teach you. Praise God, if you'll just pick up your Bibles, open your Bibles, and just look and see what God is saying to you. You, you personally, man, praise God. First Peter 2, and we're looking at verse 4 again, starting at 4, and it reads, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed, Indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And he said, ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And then look at verse six there. He says, wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believe on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same, praise God, is made head of the corner. And verse 8, and uh, a stone of stumbling. And a rock of offense, even to them that stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto they were also, praise God, they were also appointed. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, I bless you today. Lord, I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, that by your spirit, Lord, you will speak through me. Praise God with all clarity and all sincerity and all truth, Father. We pray that your word, your anointing might be upon this word, Father, that you are placing and have placed in my heart today. Lord, I pray that you anoint the ears of the hearers, the eyes that they may see. Lord, that you remove the blinders from their eyes. Lord, that they might see truth for the first time in their lives. And Lord God, I'd be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise God. As we said, we've been uh, looking at these uh, five verses or so for the last uh, week or so, uh, week four last, I think we began looking at these verses. And praise God, uh, we looked at Christ and we saw Christ as the living stone, first of all. And then we saw Christ as the uh, <clears throat> cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, praise God. And then we saw Christ as the rejected stone. We looked at two uh, segments of that uh, uh, rejected stone. And today, praise God, we're looking at verse 8, verse 8, First Peter 2, verse 8. And it says, in Christ, he is a stone of stumbling. He is a rock of offense. 
even to them that stumble at the word. Mm, our subject for the day, Christ, our stumbling stone. Christ is our stumbling stone to those who are disobedient to the word of God. Christ is to you. He's a stumbling stone. Praise God. That's what the apostle Peter says here. Now, if we'll look back and we'll see that it was, it was at God's word. It was because of God's word and at God's word that our first parents, praise God, Adam and Eve stumbled. They <coughs> stumbled into sin. Praise God. And they passed the sin nature down to the rest of humankind, the rest of the human race. The sin nature was passed down through Adam and through Eve. And their sin was what? It was disobeying the word of God. That's what it was, basically. See, in the, in the word of God, uh, sin is described in, I think, in 1 John, around 1 John 3, sin is described as the transgression of God's law, the transgressions of God's word, God's truth. This is what sin is. Amen. And God's chosen people, uh, the Jews, for thousands of years, they stumbled at God's word at God's commandments, at God's law, totally disregarding, praise God, the word of God. This is what they did for years, which they were duty-bound to obey. Amen. And eventually, <clears throat> they stumbled into blindness, right into blindness. That's what they did, babe. which to uh, this very day is still upon them according to to the word of God. I believe Romans eleven twenty five, 25, somewhere in that neighborhood, Romans eleven twenty five. 25, it says blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. In other words, blindness is upon the Jewish people today, right now, hmm? because of their disobedience to God's word and will be until all that are classified as non-Jews are saved and raptured into heaven when our Lord and Savior come back again. Amen. So blindness, blindness is what happens to those that are disobedient, especially those who have a clear direction of God's will in their lives, and you still willfully disobey, then you are struck with blindness. Not a physical blindness, no, but a spiritual blindness where you cannot see the things of God, the true things of God. Now, the same blindness, same spiritual blindness, resides in the hearts and minds of every person, every person, I say every person who have not trusted in Christ as Lord and as Savior, the same blindness. And on top of the inherent tendency to destroy, to disobey God's word that came from Adam and Eve, we inherit that. But now on top of that, mankind has added today a willingness, and a defiant mindset against the Word of God. Mm, we see that today. We see that today. Praise God. We saw it yesterday when men stood up and said, God, no God, no Word. We don't want God's Word. Mm? We want to do what we want to do. We want to kill babies when we want to kill babies. Huh? We want to accept an alternative lifestyle blatantly. They have spoken, and therefore blindness has come against the, those that are disobedient. Praise God. And Peter says that Christ is to those that disobey a stone of stumbling. Hmm? And it's at the person of Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ, which is the number one cause of stumbling today. The number one cause today. Praise God. The Jews, to the Jews as well as to the Gentiles. Huh? Who is Christ? The person of Jesus Christ. It's what many are stumbling and blumbling over right now. Refusing to accept Christ for who he really is. Who is he, Pastor? He's Emmanuel. The Bible says he's God with us. 
Hmm? He's God in the flesh. He's God with us. Praise God. Some, you know, will accept the fact. They say, well, he's a good man. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with you. He's a good man. And I do agree that he's a prophet, maybe a prophet of God. Yes, we agree with that. But now, not God. He's not God. We won't agree with that. Hmm? And they're stumbling. Hmm? They would say he's not God in the flesh. And they're stumbling and blumbling over who Christ is. Now, even though, praise God, even though Christ over and over and over and over again stated in the word of God, praise God, he has stated who he really is. Praise God. In that John 10, praise God, you don't have to turn there, but John 10 and 30, write it down, jot it down. John 10 and 30, what did Christ say? I and my father are one. That's what Christ said. I and my father are one. What does that mean? You brilliant people out there, you scholars, you got your PhDs and your DDs. I and my father are one. Christ said, we are one. Praise God. In John 14, 9, praise God. Christ said, he that has seen me has seen the father. What does that mean? Hmm? But now theologians today, uh, these brilliant theologians today and so-called Bible scholars, they say that uh, Jesus never claimed to be God. He never claimed to be God. That's what they say. Huh? But now the Jewish leaders, the scribes, the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they understood exactly what Christ meant and what he said. Praise God. When he said, I and my father are one. And when you see me, you see the father. They understood exactly what he was saying. How do you know that, preacher? How do you know that? Well, John 10, 33. If you turn there, you can turn there. John 10, 33. I said, they understood exactly what he was saying. When Christ said, I and my father are one. When Christ said, when you see me, you see the father. They understood uh, why does not, why is it that the theologians and the Bible scholars of the day and the naysayers and you, you don't believe what he said is who he is? Huh? John 10, 33. Look at this here now. Look what the Jews said. Now listen to these Jews here. The leaders now. It says in, in 10, 33, John, the Jews answered Christ saying, for a good work. We stone thee not, Jesus. We're not stoning you for because of the good things you do. We agree, and we're happy that. But now for blasphemy, and because that thou, Jesus, being a man, like everybody else they said, you make yourself God. You make thyself God. Now they understood that what Jesus was saying very plainly that I'm God. And therefore they're uh, they, they're attempting to stone him for that reason. They heard him say, I am God. Hmm? But now just to recognize Christ as a good man, or even a prophet, a great teacher, which he's all of that, amen. It don't, it don't help mankind today with the problem of sin. Hmm? Just that. The problem of sin and disobedience and the penalty that goes along with it. It don't help us, praise God. They don't help to uh, uh, alleviate that uh, eternal damnation that's coming upon those that don't believe that he's God. It don't help them just to believe that he's a good man and a great prophet. That ain't enough. Hmm? Praise God. See, to rescue man, me and you, hmm, from our descent into hell requires a pardon from the Almighty God. Hmm? Not a man. Huh? A man can't forgive us. It, it, it has to be a pardon from the Almighty God, which Jesus said that I am he. Hmm? See, in this the Jews understood. Yes, they understood this very well. Look at Mark 2 then. Praise God, they understood it. I don't know why. You people today, you don't want to accept the fact that Jesus Christ is God. He said it. The Jews believe it. Look at Mark 2 and 7 now. And look what the Jews said there in Mark 2, 7. Look at the Jews. Listen to them. Listen to them now. Uh, Mark 2, 7. Write it down now. Write it down. Don't take my word. Don't take. quit taking these preachers' word for anything. I don't believe a word most of them say. Amen. Look at Mark 2 there and look at 10. Jesus said, but that you may know that the Son of Man had power on earth. That you might know that me, Jesus, the Son of Man, had power on earth to forgive sin. I want you to know to, that you might know this. Watch what I do now. Then he looked over and he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, rise up, brother. Mm -hmm. Take up your bed and go thy way into thy house. Huh? I want you all to know I got power. Look at 12. And immediately he arose and took up his bed. 
and went forth before them all, in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we've never seen it. We've never seen it on this fashion. We've never seen this before. See, now, the, the Jews here, uh, they actually testified on Christ's behalf, didn't they? Sure they did, without actually trying to. Hmm? All the while, they testified that only God can forgive sin. And Jesus said, watch me. Look at me. Watch me. Man, take your bed up. You're forgiven. Your sin forgiven. Why? But now, they, 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 even though they were rejecting him, but at the same time, we were testifying in his behalf. What, basically, what they were doing was stumbling at the word of God, like so many of you are doing right now. You're stumbling. You're blumbling at the word of God. Praise God. But now, this generation today, Today's generation. I want y'all to hear me well this morning. Praise God. This, 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 praise God. This Wednesday morning. Hear me well now. Today's generation are also stumbling over the truth. Hmm? Over the question of whether there is an absolute truth or whether truth is relative. Hmm? That's what some know about. Is it absolute? Is there an absolute truth? Or is truth relative? And that is based upon each individual's definition of truth. Hmm? And not on the word of Christ. Amen. Look at John 14 now. Copy that down. Look at John 14. What did Christ say in 14? Is it familiar? Familiar, Pastor Scrid. See, uh, the stumbling today uh, uh, in this generation is over what is truth. Huh? They said there's no absolute I got mine, you got yours. But what did Jesus say in John 14, 6? Hmm? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. I'm the truth. Christ said, I am the truth. The only truth. Let God be true, every man be a liar. Hmm? If your preacher, your pastor, you, if you ain't standing on the truth, huh? praise God, then you're a liar. Hmm? Let God be true. Let God's words be true. And your thoughts and your imaginations and your hallucinations, they're all lies if they don't line up with the truth of God. Amen. See, today the argument goes something like this here. Well, brother, you know, brother, brother, let me say, you know, you have your truth and then I have mine. That's what they say. In other words, there's no absolute truth. I mean, just what you think. I think I'm a man. I think I'm a woman. Even though you're a man, you think you're a woman. So now the world has accepted this lunacy. Lunacy. Madness. It's a mad, mad world. Yes, it is. It's a mad, mad world out here. Praise God. They say, you have your truth and I have mine. See, but, but most people in the world today... They're like the emperor or pilot there, like old pilot that was constantly asking the question, what is truth? He asked Jesus, pilot looked Jesus in the face and said, man, what is truth? Hmm? That's no absolute. Praise God, you got yours, I got mine. That's the mindset of this uh, demented generation that we live in today. Praise God, amen, praise God. But the answer is truth. What is truth, pilot? Let me tell you what the answer is. Let me tell you what the answer is. The truth of the person. Hmm? The person is Jesus Christ. Hmm? None other, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. That's what truth is today. Amen. And when we reject Christ and when we reject Christ's word, we're je rejecting the truth. Praise God. And when you reject the truth, you, when the dust clear, all that remains is a lie. Hmm. Yes, sir. That's all that remains, a lie. Let God be true. Every man, every man be a liar. That's the word of God. Praise God. And then there are, there are those and there are those who are stumbling over the strictness, hmm. the strictness of the requirements uh, that the Lord requires of his disciples. They're, they're stumbling over the strictness. Hmm. Praise God. Uh, putting Christ first in their lives. They don't want that hmm? before loved ones. Before friends, before entertainment, before riches, fames, and before reputations. Praise God. Oh boy, they 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 stumbling over this strictness because Christ desire he he requires himself being put first. Praise God. What I love about the Lord is that when he when he recruits us, when he brings us into the family of God, he tells us what to expect. He says, count the cost, brother. I want y'all to count it. Before you start building, before you start becoming a part of this temple, before you become a stone in the temple, a living stone in my temple, you count the cost. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost. See, I love, I love that about the Lord. He shows up front. 
what we're going to have to deal with. He's a count the cost. Before you sign up with me, before you sign up to follow me and to be on my team, you better count the cost. But people stumble today because they say the word of God is strict. It's too strict. Hmm? Praise God. Luke 14. Look at 14. Copy down. Jesus. Yes, look at you know it, but look at it again. John 4, I mean Luke 14, 26. Why did Jesus say that? If any man come after me and hate not his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brethren, his sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. Huh? What he said, putting me first. Huh? Not literally hate, but first. Uh, when mama crossed the word of God, I crossed mama. When sister crossed the word of God, I crossed sister. When wife crossed and children crossed, I crossed them. Praise God. Because God's word is first. That's the requirement. But this is too strict. That's too strict. Cost me to alienate for my family. Yes, well, praise God. If you taste that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. You have no problem with this. Look at James 4 4. James 4 4. Praise God. What the Lord says here through the Apostle James. He said, Know ye not that the friendship of the world, if you're going to be a friend of the world, and that's what mostly, most of you church folks are. Oh, you ain't changed none. You're still doing the same old things you've been doing, hanging with the same old folks you've been hanging with. Huh? Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity. Mm -hmm. It's hatred. It's bitterness. It's hatred with God. Praise God. Whosoever will be friend of the world, he says, is an enemy of God. If you are friends of the world, you're God's enemy. Huh? If you're friends with everybody, every organization, every political party, if you're friend, you are an enemy of God. Praise God. And in this world, in this world, praise God, we, we only have one true friend, brother. And that's Jesus Christ. I learned that a long time ago. Praise God. I learned that a long time ago, over over 50 some years ago, I learned that my, my number one friend is Jesus Christ. I won't cross him. Mm -hmm. Praise God. If I had to mark you off, I'm going to mark you off. But now I won't cross the Lord. Praise God. But they say that uh, now they stumble at this word because they say it's too strict. It's too too demanding, too demanding mm, of my, my love and my attention. But if you do not give Christ all of your love and attention, you cannot be his disciple. And then praise God again and again. There are those that will stumble at the simple requirements of salvation. Simple. See, the salvation, even a fool won't error. The Bible. See, it's so simple, the, the requirements, is, which is just faith. Faith in Christ, not works now. Not words. See, that's what we mess up. We want to come in and say, well, Lord, I, I did this and I did that. And, well, you ain't done nothing. Christ done it all. He done it all on the cross. Amen. But we, we still people that they stumble at the simple requirements of God's salvation, which is faith in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Acts 16, 31. Most of us know that. And the Lord said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved in thy house. And when he told that, told the jailer, yes. And then, then we know Ephesians. Don't we know Ephesians 2, 8? Oh, this the word is so simple. But by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. It's simple. It's so simple. The requirements are so simple that they stumble. Hmm? Romans 10, 9. Don't we know it? Yes. If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Praise God. It's simple. It's so simple that the uh, miseducated people... Mm, they rebuke it and they push it away from them because of the simplicity. You know, I, I, you you think about Naaman, praise God, that old leader, that King Naaman there. He was a leper in that Second Kings, Second Kings, somewhere in the neighborhood about the fifth chapter, Second King, fifth chapter, somewhere in the neighborhood. And Naaman there, uh, King Naaman, uh, he, he's a type of a picture of all who believe that salvation is too good to be true. It, the, 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 the salvation that the Bible that Jesus offered is just too good. I just I can't accept that. Huh? Because of his simplicity, the simplicity of the gospel. See, Naaman, he, uh, he was a leper, and he came to God's uh, prophet there to be healed of his leprosy. He made that long trip there just to be healed of his leprosy. He heard about the maiden, the little young maiden uh, uh, told him about this great prophet. And so he made that trip to be healed of his leprosy. And he was told simply 
to go and wash in the river Jordan seven times. That's very simple, very simple. But now he rejected that. Why did he reject that? Because too simple. He expected to be wine and done. Yes. Then a ceremony performed in his behalf. Praise God before he was doused with some holy water, some holy water, something. But the prophet, God's prophet, never did come out to greet him. <laughs> oh, he was so hurt. <laughs> Important person as he was, he was so hurt. Hmm? The prophet never did come out to, to greet him. He just sent him instructions, said, brother, go down into Jordan and dip seven times, and he'll come up clean. He'll come up his skin, be like a baby's skin. But like Naaman today, he was insulted. It was so simple. He stumbled. He stumbled. The elite, you, bougies, you elite people in the world today, you educated, miseducated, really, you're miseducated. Uh, you in intelligences, uh, you know, you. They all stumble. They stumble at the simplicity of God's word. They did it then, and you're doing it again now. Oh, no. the wise man was right, wasn't he? He was correct. There's nothing new under the sun. Praise God. The same attitude. See, the Bible said, believe, and thou shalt be saved. But you want something great. You want a ceremony. You want something great. Pray. You want the Lord to do something great because you are you. Hmm? It don't work like that. Uh, they stumble. But they, there are those, again, who stumble at the low class of people who are drawn to the gospel message. Many stumble, praise God, uh, when they see the poor and the uneducated, the prostitutes, the thieves, the, 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 the sick and demon-possessed, and praise God, those who are afflicted. Praise God. When they see all these people coming and lining up and loving Jesus and, 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 and gravitating toward him, uh, these bougies, uh, people that are bougies, these people, they'll be embarrassed to be around. They don't want to be around these kind of people. And it just seems like they are drawn to the gospel. They stumble. They stumble, praise God, at the uh, class of people that uh, seem to be in the family of God. First Corinthians, you can look at it. First Corinthians 26, you know it, most of y'all know it. Praise God. Look, at it. he tells us what kind of people, Paul tells us what kind of people are, are brought into the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 1, 26. For you see your calling, brethren, not many wise men after the flesh. Not many bougies, not many mighty, not many noble. I mean, high educated Silicon Valley uh, is smart people. Not many are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world, things which are despised, has God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are. Are. Why did he do this? And he tells us in verse 29 why God chose these class of people that no flesh, no person would glory in his presence. That nobody ever walked up and said, Lord, I deserve to be saved. Lord, I, you know me, don't you? I'm a good person, Lord. You know I did this. No, 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 no. You're no better than a prostitute. You're no better than a thief. You're no better than an uneducated. But you don't want to come on those terms because you're bougie, aren't you? Hmm? See, God's people are a sanctified people. God's people are a people that's called uh, uh, to separation from the, the, the worldly people, the, the high and the mighty. We're called to separate from them. Praise God. Thank God for it, too. Praise God. Those that are proud and haughty. Hmm? That's, that, God's people don't hang. I don't hang with those kind of people. Hmm? I have no, 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 no kind of affiliation with the high and the mighty. Praise God, because God's people, that's where they're not at. They're not there. Praise God. And then again, praise God, there are those who stumble at Christ's teachings on election and predestination. Oh, boy, they's rolling down the hill huh? when it comes to the doctrines, the teachings of election and predestination. People are stumbling right now. Hmm? Stumbling. God has predestinated the saints, elected the saints. They don't, they, they stumble at that. Praise God. To the world, these words mean that uh, God purposely omitted the good people. Mm, he purposely omitted the good people. He accepted these bad people. Mm, which they say is unfair. Oh, it's so unfair. Praise God. And they make the God of the Bible to be prejudiced. 
against so-called successful and good people. That's what they say. That's, that's what they say. But now look at First Peter, though. If you look at First Peter 1 and 2, he talks about God's people. Elect. He said First Peter 1 2. Elect. God's people are elected according to the full knowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Then he said, grace be to unto you in peace be multiplied. Huh? God, yes, God elected him a people from the foundation of the world. Huh? Ephesians 1, 5. If you look there, Ephesians 1, 5. But they stumble at the doctrines of election. They stumble because God chooses who he wants to choose. He chose them a people. He chose them a people. Not based upon my goodness, because there was no goodness. I wasn't even born. Hmm? But God chose from the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1, 5, it says, having predestinated, God has predestinated us, he says, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, not according to my good. No, he didn't look down the line and saw that I was going to be a good person because there's none good. There's none good but the Father. He didn't see that, but he chose his people according to his will. So now, since these people today stumble at uh, the doctrines of election and predestination, which they do, they're stumbling all, they're falling all on the face today. Huh? Therefore, they have made themselves another Jesus. Uh, see, they rejected the true and the living God, the true Christ, and they have made themselves another Jesus, which Paul says is not another Jesus. It's a demonic spirit. They're worshiping a demon, and they call it Jesus Christ, a Jesus whom they say love everybody. Oh, he loves everybody regardless of their lifestyle or their sexual orientation. Oh, he loves you. It doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. It doesn't matter matter where you stand on abortion. You can be pro, you can be against, you can be in love with LGBT, RFCCU. It don't matter whatsoever. All oh, the Jesus that we know, he love everybody. That's what they say. Mm, they made themselves another Jesus. Mm? So it seems like the Jesus in the church today, he allows people to vote in favor of abortion. That Jesus. Hmm? Didn't we see it? We saw that in Georgia, didn't we? Oh, they voted for abortion. Church folk, preacher, the preacher, the preacher, the preacher. And he says serving Jesus. And he is another Jesus, a demonic Jesus. Praise God. Voting for abortion, voting for homosexual. See, this Jesus that they, the people in the church that serve today, this Jesus is another golden calf. It's a golden calf. They dancing in Georgia today. Oh, they dancing in Georgia. Praise God. They do the golden calf. They made themselves a Jesus that accepts everybody all the time, anytime. Oh, the people who worship the golden calf then and worship the golden calf now. Listen to me. They were unsaved then, and you are unsaved now. Hmm? Yes, you're unsaved. You're unsaved, and on top of that, you're hell bound. You're hell bound. Praise God. Stumbling, stumbling at God's word, making yourself a Jesus, your own Jesus. That's what you got. Praise God. But again, they, people today, they stumble at the final perseverance of the believers. Oh, they don't want that. Once saved, always saved. When I tell people I can't lose my salvation, I didn't earn it, and I can't lose it. Oh, they just stumble. They fall over their face there. Look at John 10. Look at John 10. What Christ says in John 10, 28 there. John 10, 28. Christ says, and I give unto them, I'm talking about his people, my people, I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Never, never. You, you, you bougies understand never. Do you understand never? They shall never perish. My people now, I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about y'all church folks. Listen to me. I know they're different. Do you know I've been in church all my life? I was made to go to church from a kid. I know church folks. I've been saved, sanctified, and praise God, the Christ living in me for 51 years. I know the difference. Hmm? Christ said, I give unto my people eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them to me, is greater than all. No man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So they stumble at the fact that uh, once God saved a person, the devil can't unsave them. Huh? They stumble today. Many are stumbling at that. Praise God. The critics say that this type of teaching, this is what they'll say. Oh, well, you know, I don't believe that because this type of teaching here, that type of teaching will encourage people to live a sinful life. It'll encourage people to sin. 
That's what they say. Not understanding what they don't understand. They do not understand the change that has taken place in our hearts. The change, the new heart, the new mind, the God, the nature, the new nature, the met- metamorphosis. Oh, uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, from uh, from the uh, from the uh, uh, cocoon to the to the butterfly. They don't understand that. Huh? They don't understand the change that takes place when we're saved in the ever presence of our Lord that lives in us. Hmm? Hmm? Who will can never be dismissed from us and who causes us to hate the very sin that we once loved. They don't understand that. So they stumble at the final perseverance of the believers that we're saved and we're always saved and we can't be unsaved. They stumble at that. Amen. And again, there are those who stumble at their inability to understand God's word. They cannot understand God's word and they stumble at that. Even though they have numerous degrees, some of them got degrees and very high IQ. They say, now they say they got high IQ, praise God, but they don't understand the true knowledge. They understand that that true knowledge is hidden from those who are outside of Christ. Purposely, God has hidden this knowledge from those that are not saved. Well, you don't believe it? Look at Luke. 24. You copy down if you can't find it. Find it. Go back later on. Luke 24. Christ has purposely. Hmm? He blinded Israel, didn't he? Hmm? To this day, they're blind and they won't accept Christ. And you are blinded probably too. Oh, you need to cry out to God for mercy. Huh? Look what Jesus said to, in Luke 24 there in 45. It says, and then open he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. Christ had to open the minds of those disciples that they might understand. Huh? Now, if you're not a believer, you're blind. Your understanding is closed off. You do not understand. You cannot understand. Your DDs don't make no difference. Your PhDs, hmm, none of it makes any difference. This is a new world. This is a spiritual thing. Uh, this is not natural. This is spiritual. Second Corinthians 4, 3, what the apostle said, for if our gospel be hid, I'm talking about this gospel, the, the gospel, the good news, this life-giving good news. If it be here, this good news, not this news about killing, this not this killing baby stuff. That ain't no good news. That ain't no life. Huh? Praise God. The gospel, if this gospel be hid, is hid to them that are lost. You're lost. Huh? If you don't understand that killing babies is not the will of God, you're lost. You're lost. I'm sorry. You're lost. If you're siding with those and voting with those that have this type of platform, you are lost. You're lost. Huh? If our gospel be here, it's here to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, you've been touched by the devil. I know you don't want to believe that. Hmm? But there it is. If, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not. What is it that you don't believe? Huh? You don't believe life is sanct- sanct- uh, sanctity of life? You don't believe that? Are you, well, you can't if you if you siding with those who bought babies. Huh? You siding with alternative lifestyle, not male and female. You, you can't. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ should shine upon them. So the enemy has put a blinder over you. And God is a man that blinder. Mm-hmm. Because you will not turn to him for truth. You're siding with the world. You're going with the flow, ain't you? Everybody doing monkey see, monkey do. Cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. Cookie cutter. That's what most of us are. Huh? Look at Matthew eleven twenty five. there. Matthew eleven twenty five. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. That's Matthew eleven twenty five. 25. Because thou hast hid these things from the wise. They're, they're hidden from you. You can't understand. You're stumbling because you can't understand. You can't understand. You can't understand. You will not understand. Huh? He said he's hid these things from the bougies, the wise, the PhDs, the doctors. And the prudence, he hid these things purposely and has revealed them to the humble, to the babes, to the little people. Hmm? Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Yes, it was good in God's sight to hide it from you. Because you will not humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God and let God save you. Let God lift you up. Praise God. People stumble because of lack of understanding. Hmm? A knowledge that comes only to the humble, to those who repent of their sins, to realize that Christ came to die for our sins, and then therefore we repent of our sins. Huh? Repent in our heart. See, James 1, 5 says these words. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, 
Hmm? Who give it all men liberty and upbraid it not shall be done. If you lack understanding of God's word, if you come to God humbly, get off your high horse. Praise God. God opened his word up to you. Praise God. But now as I prepare the clothes for the day, praise God. Let me remind you. Let me remind you of the apostle Peter, who also stumbled at the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He stumbled, Peter, he stumbled. But later on, praise God, he was saved by God's grace. He stumbled, God told him straight out, brother, before the cock crow thrice, you're gonna deny me, man. Peter said, no, ain't no way, ain't no way, Lord, ain't no way, I'm with you, I'm gonna I'm finish time for the long haul. Hmm? Praise God, but he denied the Lord. He stumbled, huh? Praise God, showing us that all who stumble, even like Peter, you're not necessarily doomed to hell. You can be forgiven. Praise God. Peter later repented of his sins and he was forgiven and he was made a leader in the church. Praise God. And to those nations that stumble, those nations that stumble at the Lord's word and do not repent, hmm? like Israel, your faith is spelled out, very plainly spelled out. Hmm? In the book of Daniel, Daniel had that uh, image built. Hmm? Praise God, from the head all the way down to the toe, which is a symbol of the nations, every nation that was going to be until the end of time. That's what that symbol was all about, that symbol, that image that he made. But now let's look what happened to those nations, and it will happen to America if America don't repent. Daniel 2, 34. He says here, then I saw till a stone, watch that stone. Now here's a stone was cut out without hands, not made with hands. Oh, that stone. I'm talking about a stumbling stone. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Daniel saw it thousands of years ago. A stone was cut out without hands, not a part of man, not, not by man, but by the Holy Spirit, which smote the image, smote the nations upon his feet that were of iron and of clay and break them in pieces. All nations that turn against God. Huh? And it says in verse 35, the latter half, and the stone that smote the image of the nations became a great mountain. Oh, praise God. Lumen above everyone. Praise God. A name above every name. A great mountain. And he filled the whole earth. See, America has been stumbling. America has been stumbling over God's word for a long time. Hmm? Long, long time. Which if we do not repent today, Christ, the stumbling stone, will fall on us. It's going to fall on you. And it's going to break you in pieces. Hmm? That's God's word. That's God's word. Even now, judgment is at the door. Judgment begins at the house of God. Because the church folks that are blatantly standing against God's word today, praise God, the stone is going to fall. It's going to fall. It's going to fall on those, praise God, who say they are children of God. Hmm? Individually and also nations, collectively as nations, God, the stone is going to fall. God is calling us to repentance today, right now. Especially you that are impersonating Christians. Not really Christians, just impersonators what you are. I mean, you know who you are. You're mocking God. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man soweth, that shall he also reap. The Bible says you must be. You must be born again. Do you know you've been born again today? You can if you repent. Ask God's forgiveness today. God will save you. Let us pray. Father, I bless you today. Thank you, Lord, for this. Another opportunity, to praise God, to come share your word today. Now, Lord, I pray the power, the power of the Holy Spirit might reach out, touch the heart of that person that you ordained to hear this word today. And Lord God, I'll be so mindful to give you all the praise, give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise God. Now, if you receive this word today as coming from the Lord, praise God, then you be blessed. You go in peace and you be blessed of the Lord. Praise God. If you receive this word today and I ask you, praise God, go over and hit that like button. Praise God, hit that like button so we can get more circulation. It ain't the money. Pastors already, I have enough. I, I, it's not money. It's not fame. It's not claim. But they say that if we get enough likes, then we can get more rotation. And we want, if you're a missionary, if you're really missionary in heart, you want this word to go forth, that God can use it for his glory and for his honor. Praise God. And then hit that bell over there. And hit that bell over there and, 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 and subscribe. And when I come again, praise God. And if God allow me to live and keep my mouth and my voice intact, 
I will come again and I'll share with you what thus saith the Lord. Praise God. But until that time, may God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer. Amen. And thank you, Lord.